All right, hello everyone. Welcome uh, to the latest webinar series from Regimen Pro. Today we are very excited to have two very renowned speakers with us. We have Dr. Vivian Bukai, who's going to be speaking about uh, DNA repair technology, or yes, and um, Dr. Dan Yarosh, who's also going to be speaking about DNA repair technology. The title is Understanding the Importance of These Powerful Enzymes in Aging Skin. So we're very excited to give all this information to you. I see a lot of you joining right now. I'll just give you guys a few moments to get situated. While you do, this is live on Zoom, so you're welcome to use the chat feature. We will have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, and we'd love for you to use the Q&A feature on Zoom so we can get to as many of your questions as possible. Otherwise, um, Dr. Yarosh is going to go first, and then Dr. Bukai, and then we'll have Q&A last. Also, um, one of the most exciting parts of the webinar is that every attendee is going to be receiving a free sample product from Photozyme, and you'll be contacted in the next few days after the webinar. We'll have your information since you registered, and we'll reach out to you. And we are also going to pick five lucky winners to get a copy of Dr. Yarosh's book. So... Without further ado, um, let's see, I think enough of you are here now. So without further ado, Dr. Yarosh, he has a PhD in molecular biology. He was the founder of AGI Dermatics, senior VP of basic science at Estee Lauder. And he's now a very esteemed consultant in the cosmetic and dermatology space. And he is going to speak about DNA how DNA security is foundational. So Dr. Yarosh, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Risa. Thank you, Greg and Randy, for the invitation to speak today. Uh, we worked so well together a few years ago at AGI Dermatics, and I'm delighted to see that all that we accomplished there is being carried on today. I want to say a special hello to Dr. Vivian Bouquet of San Antonio. I followed her publications, especially those related to alpha and beta defensins. It's great stuff. And now I'm delighted to share the virtual stage with her. So today I want to talk about my favorite subject, DNA repair. The Photozyme MD products have fully embraced the importance of DNA in healthy skin and the need for fast and accurate DNA repair to preserve skin health and youthful appearance. So why is DNA repair so important? Well, first and foremost, DNA damage causes mutations in skin DNA, and this you're all familiar with. These mutations are central to the development of skin neoplasia. First, we're all aware of actinic keratoses. These are precancers, which contain all the mutations that are found in frank neoplasia. So they accumulate mutations, and then those are sorted out, and the drivers drive them on to uh, develop uh, usually squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, but then we have the category of non-malignant skin cancers, basal and squamous cell carcinoma, and those overwhelmingly contain mutations in oncogenes that have the signature of UV damage. So we can trace UV damage directly to the changes in the genetic code which lead to these cancers. And then finally, we have melanomas. Here, the link to sun exposure is clear, but the process is more complex. It probably involves the number of intense exposures, sunburns, rather than the accumulated dose. And that's because these intense exposures particularly burden the DNA repair process. But beyond mutations, I wanna discuss the importance of DNA security in many other aspects of skin health, particularly skin aging. In particular, I wanna introduce the concept that DNA is a sentinel for skin health. What do I mean? DNA is the most sensitive molecule in the skin to environmental attack, and it can alert the rest of the skin when damage has occurred. So in order to explain this a little bit better, let me take you down to the cell level and walk you through the first seconds and minutes, hours, days, and weeks after DNA damage. Now remember, DNA is in the cell nucleus. It's a double helix, it's twisted and torqued. It's coded with proteins that read the code and translate that information into cell function. 
And every so often the DNA has to strip, unwind, and duplicate for cell division. Now this DNA is under constant attack. Just living at 37 degrees, 98.6 Fahrenheit causes chemical reactions that damage DNA. And then on top of that, there's solar UV, which is the single biggest environmental cause of damage. The estimate is that a typical cell in the skin, every single cell in the skin suffers about 10,000 lesions a day. Every cell has to deal with 10,000 attacks every day. So to better understand what happens as a result of DNA damage, let's walk through what happens after a sunburn. So first there's the initial damage. DNA absorbs a UV photon causing a photochemical reaction that binds together two adjacent DNA bases. And we call the most common one a cyclobutane pyrimidine dimer, a dimer because they're connected. This causes a kink in the helix and it dislodges some of those bound proteins. In addition, free radicals, which are generated by oxidative reactions caused by UV can also break the DNA and this unwinds the torque that's in the helix. So within seconds, proteins that are specially designed to recognize these distortions now bind to the DNA. They're not bound until they see this kink or this break in the DNA. Some of these proteins which bind to the DNA are signaling proteins. They're called kinases and they phosphorylate other proteins which start a long chain a reaction of signaling events one kinase kinase another molecule, that kinase is another molecule, and you get this signaling reaction that tells the cell and all the cells surrounding that damaged cell that something's happened, I've been hit. Other proteins are then recruited to the site of the DNA repair protein, and they cover the wounded DNA and attract more DNA repair proteins to fix the damage. This all happens within seconds. Within minutes, Transcription of the DNA is halted. The cells cannot use that portion of the damaged DNA to transcribe instructions. This happens in minutes. The signaling pathways continue to activate a chain reaction starting from these damage recognition kinases. And one of the targets of this chain reaction is the famous P53 protein. Now this protein has been called the guardian of the genome and that's because when it gets activated, it's able to activate a large number of DNA repair enzymes. But the P53 protein is a fascinating protein. It has many sites on it for phosphorylation. And so it acts sort of like a computer. If it's only phosphorylated a little bit, it only generates a small reaction. If it's phosphorylated substantially, it invokes the full complement of DNA repair uh, reactions. But if it receives too many phosphorylation hits, then it signals cell self-destruction. It, it set, starts a program to destroy the cell, which is called apoptosis. So P53 acts as a computer to calculate how much damage has occurred. Now, in addition, there's a state that cells can enter, particularly aging cells, that's called senescence. And these cells are essentially cellular zombies. They're not alive but they're not dead. They're not functional, but they're not apoptotic. They just sort of sit there and release signaling proteins that are damaged proteins. This is called the SASP, the senescence associated secretory phenotype. And when you accumulate these senescent cells in skin, it gives rise to all the aging phenotypes. The skin isn't dead, but it doesn't respond the way youthful skin does. Now within minutes of these, uh, in addition to the P53 activation, there's a release of master cytokines, IL-1 and TNF-alpha. These are cytokines that then trigger the release of other cytokines. So you see this amplification, this cascade and amplification beginning within seconds, then minutes uh, and signals are sent out. These IL-1 and TNF-alpha that are released from the damaged cells cause a release of downstream inflammatory cytokines. They create an inflammasome that spits out these inflammatory signals 
And some of these inflammatory signals recruit immune cells to the site of damage. So this all begins within minutes. Within hours, the signs of inflammation, we've now reached the end of these signaling cascades, the inflammatory cytokines have done their job. And now you start to see the physiological effect the, the dilation of blood vessels, the recruitment of inflammatory cells. And by 24 hours, you see the physiological effect, a sunburn, which consists of inf inflammation, uh, uh, a cell blood vessel dilation and other inflammatory signs. If you have too much of these cytokine release, you have a cytokine storm, which we recognize as heat stroke. Now, the, not only is there an inflammatory response, but these signals within hours lead to tissue remodeling and protection. And here is where we generate all the signs of aging. First, we get release of MMP1, which is a metalloproteinase. It chews up the collagen. The intent is to remodel the wound, but in destroying the collagen, this leads to wrinkles. If you have repeated cycles of these release of these MMPs, you destroy the collagen, you don't have the supporting structure and thus wrinkles develop. The same thing's true of elastases, which are released as a result of these inflammatory signals. They chop the, the elastin and although the elastin isn't lost, it no longer has its, its function of providing some support to the skin. In addition, their melanocytes are given the signal to make pigment for skin protection. We recognize this is a tan, but often it's uneven and you have signs of uneven pigmentation which take a long time to resolve. So people ask me, and I'm sure they've asked you, how is DNA repair an anti-aging treatment? I thought it was just about cancer. And the answer is, is because DNA repair stops the signaling that leads to the release of these enzymes that cause wrinkles and hyperpigmentation. So DNA go repair goes to work within hours after the initial damage. The human system involves a complex of dozens of proteins that have to find the damage, unwind the DNA, cut out the damaged strands, and then fill in with a patch. This takes time. After a sunburn, it takes 24 hours to remove half the damage. So you get a sunburn, the next day, you still have half the damage in your DNA. And the next day, you still have 25% of the damage in your DNA. So it takes time for the, the, the normal repair system to remove these damage. So clearly, there's an opportunity and a need to speed up the removal of damage so you can shut down these signals, not only prevent the mutations, but shut down these inflammatory signals. This is the opportunity to improve DNA repair for which the Photozyme MD products are designed. Now, within days, if these signals are not controlled, slowly the immune response peaks and it converts from what's called a Th1 to a Th2 response. The Th1 is the inflammatory response, but the Th2 response is an immunosuppressive response. The key cytokine here that's released after days is IL-10. And this presses the T cell response so that antigens encountered a few days after a sunburn do not trigger an immune reaction. And in fact, this immune suppression is key to the outgrowth of skin cancers. Skin cancers themselves can be removed by the immune system. But if you have immune suppression, then the immune system does not remove these skin cancers a nation's skin cancers, and they're able to grow out. So immune suppression is critical to the development of skin cancers, and these are triggered by DNA damage. Now, during these minutes and hours and days, it might be that the cell's time to divide comes, comes up, but it can't divide because it has a damaged template. The cell may nevertheless still try to divide and replicate its template, but when it comes to a damaged part of the DNA, it makes a mistake in the copy, and that's when mutations arise. And they arise at these specific sites that are sensitive to UV damage. And so that's why we can trace a particular mutation to UV, because the mutations occur at sites where the photochemical reaction is most likely to occur. And that's why they're called 
signature mutations. Now, mutations can occur all along the DNA strand, and many of them might have no effect. But they do lead to drastic responses. First, they can lead to uncontrolled pigment production and persistent pigment production. And these lead to what we know as solar lentigenes and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. But most importantly, the damage can occur in cancer genes, and the cell may then divide out of control. One example is a mutation in the p53 gene, which now is unable to control the other types of damage, and you get a proliferation of mutations, and those mutations can occur in genes that drive a replication. The guardian of the genome is essentially sidelined. So how can we stop all these reactions? The point is to speed up repair by adding enzymes that are able to help remove damage in the key moments after it occurs. And that's the purpose of the Photozyme MD products. They contain three important DNA repair enzymes. The first is called photolyase. This is derived from a, a plankton called Anacystis nigilans, and it repairs UV damage in a light activated way. It binds to the DNA and absorbs light and uses that energy to split the, per the perimony dimer apart. Now, what type of light can be used to activate this enzyme? Uh, it, there's a broad spectrum of light that's able to activate the photolyase. A uh, UV, of course, can do it. Blue light is the most e efficient, but visible light can also activate. So fluorescent indoor light can activate the photolyase. A rule of thumb is if you can see the skin, the photolyase can see the light. So unless you paint the skin or wear a piece of clothing, the photolyase is able to capture visible light and do its work. And this repair is much faster than the normal excision repair. The instant the photolyase absorbs visible light, it accomplishes its repair. It doesn't take 24 hours. The second enzyme that's in the product is the UV endonuclease from Micrococcus luteus. This is a cousin of the T4N5 enzyme and it comes from a skin micro, a microbe. It repairs UV damage, it recognizes UV damage, but no light is needed. It's slower than the photolyase, but it doesn't require light. And overall, it speeds up the normal human repair. And the third enzyme is a glycosylase from a plant, Arabidopsis thalania. And this is a glycosylase that's specific for oxidative damage. It can repair damage that's intrinsic, just uh, rising from living in 37 degrees. It can repair oxidative damage caused by UV. And most importantly, it can also repair damage caused by air pollution. Now, one of the hot areas of research is the effects of air pollution on DNA and skin. One of the oxidizing characteristics of air pollution is called PM2.5. These are particulate matter that's 2.5 microns. And they're little balls of carbon that are just coated with polyaromatic hydrocarbons. And once those bind to the skin, the polyaromatic hydrocarbons leach off. When they get to the DNA, they oxidize it. And this is a hot new area of research. So air pollution is an oxidizing agent. In addition to the well-known ozone present in some forms of air pollution, which is also an oxidizing agent. So the glycosylase is designed to repair damage uh, from all these sources, the normal uh, heat, uh, UV, and air pollution. Now, these enzymes that are in the Photozyme MD products are real enzyme. There are dozens of publications on the molecular biology of these enzymes. There are dozens of clinical studies on these enzymes. Now, I've seen some other products, some crazy products that make crazy claims about DNA repair. Let me tell you, it's not so easy to make these enzymes work. So when you hear these claims, you have to ask them yourself, do these other products support their claims with published data or are they just hand-waving copiers? Now, the, the DNA repair enzymes are designed to complement, not replace, but complement sunscreens. Remember, the sunscreens stay on the surface and the DNA repair enzymes work by penetrating into the living skin. The sunscreens must be used before sun exposure but the DNA repair enzymes can be used before, during, or after sun exposure. This enhanced DNA repair can make up for times when the patients don't use a sunscreen, they forget to use a sunscreen, or they don't apply it correctly. 
So let's rem remind ourselves of the benefits of enhancing DNA repair. It's to keep the sentinel quiet. Not only does it lower the risk of cancer and precancers, but it reduces the signs of premature aging by stopping the signals that release enzymes that cause degradation of the skin structure and induce hyperpigmentation. And it preserves immune health and keeps our immune system from being suppressed. And I just want to remind everyone that it's really not too late to start. It's not just about the sun exposure when you were a child or a, a teenager. All these signals go on when you're exposed to the sun as an adult. So it's never too late to enhance DNA repair and stop the signals so that you can preserve your skin health. So I wanna thank you very much for your kind attention tonight. After uh, Dr. Bouquet speaks, I'd be happy to take questions. And now I turn it back to uh, our moderator, Risa. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. I, um, I know a lot of people have questions. A couple of them I have noted to answer at the end of the webinar. So please keep popping them in in the Q&A feature. And now I am very excited. Dr. Bukai, are you ready for us? We are very excited to have Dr. Bukai here. She is, has been in private practice for over 30 years and from San Antonio, Texas. She has a very keen interest in cosmeceuticals. And if you recognize her, that's probably because she's definitely considered one of the preeminent dermatologists in the country. She's all over, I've seen her all over the media before. And she's, um, she has a lot of expertise in a combination approach to minimally invasive facial aesthetics. So I'm very excited to hear what she has to say and I hope you all are as well. So Dr. Bukai, Bukai it's all you. So you're on mute and I think you're just gonna share your presentation. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you, Dr. Yarosh. I have been a, uh, a huge fan over the years. And of course I have your book and now I have another one of your book. I have the book, but let me share the screen. I am not the most technologically gifted, but we're gonna figure this out. Um, let me get to my, I thought I had it, it worked Perfect. a second ago. There we go. Perfect. There we are, all righty. So I, I do have a few slides and just um, bear with me because I will hopefully, I'm gonna end up skipping some, but just as a reminder that these will be, this will be available, the webinar will be available. And if anybody wants a copy of the slides, just email me, do it that way. All right, so let's just go that way. I don't know why I wrote my disclosures, but just to show you that I consult, I mean, I really am interested in skincare quite a bit. And so this is just something that I thought was just, you know, a little levity here that, you know, I regret taking such good care of my skin said no one ever. And this I think is actually very true now. And before 2006, my approach to skincare was definitely sunscreens antioxidants, retinoids, collagen boosters, growth factors. You know, I started my practice in 91. And so really the big thing then was, you know, as we started was alpha hydroxy acids, of course, big landmark paper uh, in 1986 from uh, Kligman talking about the benefits of, of retinoic acid in terms of photo aging. And so with that, with that said, the, um, those are the things that I knew. So alpha hydroxy acids, retinoids, peptides came much later. And the idea of having you know, good skin was really to make everything else just look better, right? So like the, the outcomes, if I was doing neurotoxins or fillers or laser resurfacing, everything would look better because the canvas would be that much nicer. Um, what I didn't think about, which was something that just occurred to me a little while ago, and again, I'm not technologically gifted here, other than talk, you know, using sunscreen for pre, you know, prevention of photo damage and skin cancers, I really didn't think about skincare as a way to kind of optimize skin health and wellness so that that way, any treatments I did in the office would be better. And it kind of makes sense though, right? I mean, if the baseline health of your skin is better than things that we do to it, treatments we do for our patients, those outcomes should be better if, we're, you know, if the skin is just healthier to start with. And so I, my aha moment though kind of started when I had, 
I had this melanoma. I'm not going to go into that story, but I had a stage four melanoma, uh, metastatic, blah, 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 blah. But I knew that my skin looked good, but obviously it wasn't behaving well. And that's when I really started to search. And as somebody who's also loves fashion and everything, you think, well, why would, you know, women's wear daily have something in this? So AGI Dramatics launches into skincare with, you know, expecting more than 4,000 dermatologists and plastic surgeries to, you know, to pick up on this stuff and Remergent was the skincare line. And so what I thought was really interesting, I thought, well, this is really interesting. I got to get my hands on some of this DNA repair stuff. And, and sure enough, I did. And unfortunately, it was short lived because Dr. Yarosh had such a great product that, of course, it had to get bought by somebody like Estee Lauder, you know, one of the giants. And then bye bye the original Remergent. And now let's, you know, here come, you know, here come the other ones, the replacements. But I thought, can DNA repair enzymes and in, in products really work? So, again, just as a reminder, because you know, a lot of us that dispense skincare in the office, we're so exhausted, we do all the education, our patients, you know, now they have a list of what we recommend for them. And then what do they do? They go online, they go get that. And, you know, they may not purchase it from you. And this is why, you know, uh, and I just have to give a huge shout out to Regimen MD, Dr. Dr. Tadaldi and Dr. Ferris for coming up with this brainchild, because it's a great way to have products that maybe you can't stock in your practice, but you want your patients to have them. And I know for sure Photozyme is one of their, you know, is definitely in the, in the mix there. But the one thing that your patients cannot buy online, you know, they can't buy the procedures that you do on them. They can't buy those outcomes. I mean, this do it yourself stuff. But one thing that they can't get from the procedures that we do for our patients is they can't get that repair in the DNA. They can't reverse the effects of oxidative stress, improve the protein content, uh, well, you can improve collagen uh, content, but the again, so for maintenance of results, it's really important to, to keep that skin really healthy. So let me just keep going here a little bit. And I have so many slides, but obviously I'm going to shorten what I say. My cursor disappears. And Elizabeth, I know you're watching me and I keep looking down and not at the camera. So when I did a talk on DNA repair, and I did it before 2014, I, I have several years going back, but I did do a Google search for one of the talks I was giving in, I guess it was done January, 2014. And DNA, using these exact words, DNA repair and skincare, I got 1.71 million results. I did the same search as I was working last minute on this presentation. And, um, and I got 29.7 million. So there's definitely an interest in this. And what Dr. Yarosh was saying is, you know, you kind of have to be able to sift out which products really do, you know, do have and which ones don't. And I'm certainly not here to put down any other products, but I can only speak to what I have tried and used and what works. I show this because there's so, so many, you know, the ads come first and there's so many, but if you look at the bottom of the screen, this is what got my attention was the six critical questions for DNA repair enzymes and skincare. Lo and behold, um, Greg Chance and uh, Randy Creech, who have this company, Photozyme, and uh, but Greg actually had been at AGI Dermatics and later with others, I got this paper sent to me, but it also came up on my search. And I think that this really sums it up. And this is a paper that, that Dr. Yarosh did along with um, Ronald Moy's uh, student, I, I think she was a fellow, Amanda um, Rosenthal, but this came out uh, in clinical cosmetic, there, there's your reference if you want to pull the paper up yourself. But these are the questions. Instead of going in and doing a deep dive review of the entire literature, and believe me, it's full of information, it was more like these are the questions that kept coming up over and over and over again. A lot of us are pretty skeptical about, about claims. So these are the questions that we should be asking. Do DNA repair enzymes really work? Do they actually get to the skin and repair DNA? Believe me, I've heard from others from competitors or from others saying like, oh, um, those are too big. It's like growth factors. They don't really get into the skin. They can't really work. How much of the damage can these enzymes actually repair? Can they prevent skin cancer? Can they repair past damage? I mean, who doesn't want to do, get into some correction, uh, not just prevention? And, and, how, and what would be the effects in skin photo aging? And I think Dr. Yaros just gave us really some very compelling uh, information to tell us that it really is, does affect photo aging. So I'm kind of a nerd. I do love shoes and I do love fashion, 
But in my heart of hearts, I am totally a nerd. And I don't really take that many things at face value. So I kind of started looking up, well, let's find out more about these things. So I'm just going to show you some of the patents that Dr. Yarosh has done. And he may not know that I was doing this. And sorry if I embarrass you. But OK, because my question would be, how do we know that these things are actually stable when they're in a formulation? So I found this nifty little patent from 2006. So it's Applied Genetics Incorporated, in case anybody was wondering what AGI Dermatics was. And, um, and this particular patent was the, for the, the T4 endonuclease 5, or uh, it's also known as T4E5. It, we'll see it different way but enhanced stability, including at non-refrigerated temperatures. And since most of us don't keep our skincare in refrigerators, I thought it was kind of interesting to see that there is this, this particular facet has been studied. Okay, what other little tidbits did I find? Oh, ergo, L-ergothionine. I remember back when Remergent was still uh, the brand, but I remember learning that L-ergothionine was an incredibly potent antioxidant. So, um, and we also know mitochondria are really, really important uh, for, for everything, right? And so I thought this was a nice little patent of, of now I'm just gonna say, Dan, this is December of 1999 before, you know, before, this has been the last millennium. And, uh, but the, the date of the actual patent was 2002, November, 2002, but it's actually showing how encapsulated liposomal and encapsulated ergothionine uh, could get in there and mitigate the effects. Of, of damage. So I thought that was an interesting little patent there. And uh, okay, nobody's supposed to tan, least of all, don't say that word, T-A-N, three letter word to a dermatologist. But hey, I grew up in the 70s and I did try to tan uh, unsuccessfully. But just the idea that there could be tanning, that you could reduce the damage from UV by using something with, uh, with um, DNA repair in it. So this is not to go tell everybody to go to tan, but we all have patients who go out and they're not gonna avoid going out but I think a really good reason for, you know, for using, for using, you know, DNA repair, not just on the face, but also on the body as well. Um, and here is another one uh, looking at uh, a method for treating UV induced suppression of contact hypersensitivity by administering T4 endonuclease 5. So there's another way. So it, it could, you know, that was able to show this way. And um, this was at UT. And then just how about purifying? And there's many patents on this. I just pulled up one of the ones. I pulled up 1994, but there's several of these. And this was just purification and administration of the DNA uh, repair enzymes, uh, knowing that these could, you know, these can be made. And okay, but what about that question? Does it actually get into the skin? Well, so this was actually showing that this is, so this was really the method for administering the protein, having intracellular biological activity into the interior of living cells, which lie below the skin stratum corneum. So it's not just being on top of the status stratum corneum, which a lot of people used to say was dead, but it's not, but it's the way to it. So this talks about encapsulating with like, you know, using liposomes to encapsulate the DNA repair protein, putting it on the surface of, you know, living skin so that it gets to the stratum corneum and gets through into the, into the cells. So I thought that's kind of a nifty patent. So that for me is already answering a lot of the questions I had when I was very skeptical. Um, this, is, this is just to show you that DNA repair is not, I mean, lots of people have worked on this, but in 2015, DNA repair was Nobel Prize. Uh, and this went to Thomas Lindahl, Paul uh, Modric, uh, Asi Sankar, and this was a joint repair. This was in, in um, I'm sorry, it was in chemistry. So just showing you that that has been the focus that way. Just a quick review, pyrimidine dimers or CPDs, oxidative, and that's the nucleotide excision repair pathway. And then oxidative damage uh, is the base excision repair pathway. I'm doing this more for, for your own, uh, you know, just to have that. So back when I was giving a talk for, um, one of my, as a panelist for Dr. Joel Schlesinger's meeting, Cosmetic Surgery Forum. Uh, I love being in that top 10 cosmeceuticals uh, panel and I've done this meeting of his every year. But in 2013, there it was, uh, Cellfix was there and that was, this was the uh, DNA repair, uh, which is now known as Photozyme. But just to show you, it was the same one. And at that time it was actually had been purchased by Precision, uh, by Precision. And again, it containing the anacystis uh, nigelans, which is the photolyase. 
And by the way, humans don't make photo lies. Uh, kind of evolution kind of kicked that out of us, but the photo lies does work in humans for doing this. Then there's the Micrococcus luteus, the UV uh, DNA endonuclease, and then the Rapidopsis thaliana, the OGG1 DNA glycosylase. So, and it has ergothionine and there's a liposomal delivery system. Notice how a lot of this correlates with some of those patents I just showed you. So let me go back. I know I'm looking down at my screen, but I have to get to the computer, Elizabeth. So um, let me do this. All right, so this is, this is the one. It's the Photozyme Youth Recovery Facial Serum. So this is what we're talking about. It's the same one as Cellfix. It also used to be called BioCell, but then that name was already taken. So it became Photozyme. But these are the ingredients in it. This I just took directly from the website, but you can see that it has ergothionine. It has the plankton extract, which uh, has a photolyase in it. So if you see plankton extract, there you go, photolyase. It has the Arapidopsis thaliana extract and the micrococcus lysate, along with other you know, typical things that are in, in these serums. So this is one. So before I even knew the, uh, before I even, um, knew that this, these were ever gonna be of any use. We do a lot of the, the Vizia, well, I haven't done Vizia since the pandemic because who wants to put their, their face in, you know, we're with patients and all the, you know, hygiene precautions we have to take. I haven't been doing that, but I kind of did my own unfunded uh, study. I, I, I actually looked at a hundred, uh, with a hundred patients took before and after uh, Vizia's, I mean, with, with the Camfield a complexion analysis and wanted to see what the reduction of UV spots was uh, before and, and after using, before using that. And I think some of these that are actually on the Photozyme website were some that I, I donated, but you could see that a before of 300 or 200, and I can't even read my own laptop, 217 spots came down to 64. Um, you, can, you can read this for yourself and see it on the website for yourself. But it kind of showed me that it actually was working because it was kind of all other things being equal. Let me just go back and uh, I keep losing my cursor. Sorry, guys. This was all right. So sometimes you'll see them as other names and other products. So ultrasons or the T4 N5, which is the, the uh, micrococcus lysate, it excises. The, sometimes you'll see the word roxosomes, which extract. That's the OGG1. That's the Arapidopsis thaliana photosomes repair. And there's your plankton um, extract that has the photolyase in it. Uh, I'm going to not dwell too much on this because we this was already discussed, but just to reiterate that the body can only repair about half of the dimers it produced every day. And the other point that I want to make is that the, um, and I'm just going to kind of go through this, sorry about that. Um, but the other point that I want to make is that what damage begets more damage. So damaged uh, components in the cell, they themselves become basically reactive oxygen species or, or free radicals. So they can then cascade that damage. So that's why removing it is so important. It's not like just the damage sits there and eventually goes away on its own. It's that the damage, the, the, the product that's already damaged can then cause further damage and amplify that. Um, looking at this, this is uh, with the OGG1 or the Aerodops, Rapidopsis thaliana DNA glycosylase, also known as OGG1, 90% of the repair is in around two hours, which I think is like pretty remarkable uh, with that. So it works pretty fast. And um, again, uh, the photolyase, it breaks the cyclopyrimidine chains. That's the photolyase. And this is, you know, pictures are always better, but this is a, if you all know, uh, Dr. Krutman out of Germany, he's done so much of the research on the effects of UV in general, of, of the whole spectrum, whether it's UV, infrared, visible light on, 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 on aging for us. But this is just using one MED and, uh, but you can see that on the image below you. So with the one MED, you can see this kind of lit up over here. So with no UV, you don't see any of these lit up of the, um, of, of the damage. Now you can see the, the dimers that are lit up and you can see a reduction in the dimers by using uh, a DNA repair enzyme. And this would be the photosome, the uh, photosomes. And, um, and the photolyase also reduced, uh, so this was using it with, um, using with uh, as a reference, there's a positive control over here 
then there's just a vehicle with, uh, again, with UVR. But if you actually added a topical sunscreen and photolyase, it does it much better than the, than the uh, sunscreen, than the sunscreen alone. So you have a, a, a better, you have less CPDs of the cyclopyrimidine dimers if you have a sunscreen with photolyase versus a sunscreen alone after radiation. So we know that there's, a, you know, a lot of sunscreens out there that actually have, um, you know, have photolyase in it. So you can actually uh, have reduced damage by using sunscreen with DNA repair enzyme or uh, using sunscreen on top of your DNA repair enzymes this way. And again, with the anastasis nigelans, it takes longer uh, to get, it, it takes more minutes to reach uh, sunburn as opposed to with, without any of the topicals. So there's a, actually a protective effect with that as well. Uh, I threw in polypodium leucotomus extract. Uh, there's, a, there's several out there. Isden has one, uh, Ferndale has it in Heliacare, and there's a lot out there. They're not all the same, so do your research on that. But, but we do know that, that, that this particular extract is, you know, since a lot of people are interested in taking things orally, does also help with, uh, with DNA uh, damage as well, as well as mitigating the effects of UV, uh, UVB, UVA. I, put, I, I went ahead and just briefly discuss this uh, from the JDD in 2013. And I remember being on this advisory board. I didn't do the study, Dr. Spencer did, along with the other co-authors, but this actually used the self-fix product. So the, the point I wanna make is sometimes, you know, you, you read about an individual ingredient, but what really matters is the formulation, right? You wanna make sure that everything, that there's bioavailability of these enzymes uh, and of the antioxidants that you're not just using, because if you're just testing an individual ingredient, there's no guarantee that the product that you're using is going to do the same thing. So this, I can tell you flat out, I can tell you that this was the one that was the self-fix uh, DNA re repair, which is now known as Photozyme, same product. So um, let me just, and this was still when it was owned by Precision, um, Precision MD had done that. So I'm not gonna go, Dr. Dr. Yarosh already did this, but just as basically, if you have a decrease in the signature mutations, uh, the CPD, then hopefully that will show that, it's, um, that there's improvement if you have that, or there's protection. We talked about P, uh, P53, the tumor suppressor gene, and it, it really is the guardian of the genome. I really like that. We kind of have to get t-shirts, guardian of the genome. And, uh, and we do know that mutations in P53 correlate strongly with skin cancer uh, development. So they actually look, it's a pretty sophisticated study. So, um, so basically this was just done on forearms. Uh, it was a topical formulation. It was twice daily on the left forearm for eight weeks between biopsy sampling. And they could use a skin cleanser of their choice. And there was a sunscreen that was provided by the site. Now the sunscreen had to be something that did just sunscreen effect, right? It didn't have any additives in it that were gonna improve, but it doesn't really matter because in the control area, um, well, I'll show you. So the four, four millimeter punch biopsies were taken from the left dorsal forearm at baseline before product was done and at eight weeks after twice daily use. And, uh, and then they were processed for the post ultraviolet uh, light adducts. Uh, so the UV that was shown on there, so pre and post treatment. And then there was, of course, trained uh, uh, pathologist to also look at elastosis, collagen, neogenesis, and cell vitality. 19 out of 20 completed the study. And of the 19 who completed the study, a decrease in the pyrimidine dimers was seen in 18 of the 19 subjects. P53 mutations also decreased in 18 of the 19 subjects. And of course, secondary, the secondary endpoints included evaluation of solar elastosis, on routine pathology. And solar elastosis, as our patients come in and they've got that kind of yellowy sun damaged skin, and it's really, really hard to treat that, to improve. That's when we usually start to get our machines out as well, our devices out as well. So with the conclusions, the primary endpoint was met that there was a decrease in the permitting dimers in P53 mutations after eight weeks of treatment. Um, I mean, there's other things I would have liked to have seen in the study, like carrying it further out as well as a regression analysis, like what would happen after, like how long after if somebody quit using it, would things go back the other way? But there was also a decrease in solar elastosis as well as improvement in the clinical appearance of photo damaged uh, skin. 
So I really liked this particular one. Same year, another study showed that uh, containing DNA repair enzymes uh, also prevents ultraviolet induced telomere shortenings. And we know that telomeres protect our DNA. And so uh, this was a, a, a pilot study um, that was done on that. But I found this other publication in JDD and, and actually we, uh, uh, Greg again had, had talked, he was talking about a pyramid because I saw on their website, I didn't know what this pyramid was on their website on the Photozyme, but it's Skin Health and Beauty, a clinically based guide to selecting topical skincare products. And this is where it gets more practical, right? Um, because sometimes we don't know what, what's what, what do we recommend? And really the important thing here, so it's, it's Floor Meyerall, Julie Kenner and, and Zoe and Dr. Zoe Drelos. So the idea is that there's just certain things that are fundamental to skincare and everything else just gets a little bit better. So no doubt that sunscreen, because we want to prevent the formation of free radicals. Antioxidants, because sunscreens aren't perfect and we need something to, nor can a sunscreen ingredient scavenge free radicals. And DNA repair, because damage is just going to happen and we want to control some of that damage and be able to reverse it. After that, we want more transformative. You know, what can we transform the skin more? Well, moisturization is important. We know that dry skin ages about 20% faster. Exfoliation is important. We have to like speed things up because we know cell renewal slows down as we get older. It takes about uh, 28 days from, you know, start from basal cell to, to exfoliation when you're in your 20s, but it can take six to eight weeks when you're in your 40s. So we kind of sometimes have to boost things. So cell turnover and exfoliation. And then optimizing the skin, just a little nicer, a little, they're kind of the garnish, right? And that's where your peptides and growth factors come in. But really the foundation, if you can limit, if patients are reluctant to do a lot of things, what you can really do is gotta, I mean, sunscreen is non-negotiable. I put that in all my talks about cosmosu, you know, about, about skincare. Antioxidants and DNA repair. What I really like, and I just discovered, sorry to sound like a little commercial, is that all of a sudden, I discovered that Photozyme ND has a vitamin C, 15%, E, 1%, ferulic acid, half a percent, but with the full complement of all three DNA repair enzymes. For So those patients that are not great about putting lots of stuff in on, what a great, great choice now. Um, and so Erno Laszlo was all this skincare that was sold at Neiman's and some of the upscale stores. He, he had this philosophy, but I really liked what he said, which was beautiful skin requires commitment, not a miracle. We do have to commit. We do have to make that commitment for skin wellness. So what are the potential effects of DNA repair on outcomes? Well, we do all these procedures in the op, on the office. They don't have effect on DNA. So hopefully refer, refer, repairing DNA is going to improve skin texture and tone. It's going to just improve overall wellness. Wellness is something that I really like. I like wellness more than anti-aging, right? We're all going to age, but we can choose how we're going to age. We're going to improve the skin's ability to regenerate. If you've got healthier cells that are going to divide, it's easier. You know, I, I tell patients when they're like, what do you mean this DNA repair? I said, think of it as spell check for your skin. If you send out an email and it has a typo. And then that email is amplified, amplified and sent out. That's just never going to get corrected. So that DNA repair is a way to correct, to take out what's damaged so that when there's replication, when you get a new, when your skin cells divide or body cells divide, um, they're going to go in with a healthier, uh, not so misspelled DNA. And also, could it actually not only enhance are, pro, are the outcomes of our treatments that we do in the office, but could it actually increase the duration of those outcomes by having improved skin wellness? And I think so. I think the answer is yes, but that's going to require really long studies, prospective studies, and, uh, and that's really hard to do. So here's what a nutshell. I will not let age change me, and I'm trying not to mature but I will change the way that I age. And I know so many patients come in and what their real request is that they don't wanna to have to wear makeup. They wanna to choose to wear makeup as an enhancement, but they don't want it to be the shield behind which they have to hide their skin. And with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll quit sharing so that we can open up for questions.
Great. Thank you so much. That was, that was amazing. I know everyone's clapping. Um, a lot of you joined kind of midway through this presentation. So I just want to let you know um, that this whole thing was recorded and we will be sending it out via email so you can all watch it later. A lot of people are saying excellent information. Thank you both. And you look beautiful and so do you, Dan. <laughs> um, anyways, I do have a couple questions. So we're now open for Q&A for the remained, remainder of our hour. If anyone else would like, please put your questions now into the Q&A feature on Zoom, or if you're on mobile, you can put them in the chat and I'll grab them. So here we go. Um, this is the first one. Dr. Yerosh, how does Irifontona Actinica compare to your products? Uh, so that's a product made by ISDIN, uh, yeah. which is a division of Pooj. Uh, they're a sunscreen and they have the photolyase. Uh, I don't know about the formulation or how much they use. I don't believe that they have the uh, OGG1, the glycosylase, and I'm not sure. I don't think they have the Micrococcus luteus, but they have formulated sunscreen with the photolyase and some of the papers uh, that Vivian showed were from researchers that they've supported uh, to demonstrate that they prevent uh, skin cancer and actinokeratosis. That's what I know about them. Got it. Okay. Here's another one. Um, Daniel, I heard you speak near Stanford a couple of years ago when your book was first published. At that time, you were a principal in a product line called Remergent. Does this line contain the same technology and repair elements? Uh, yes. Uh, the three main enzymes that are in Photozyme MD were in Remergent. Uh, Remergent was acquired by SD Lauder. Uh, and rather than continue it as a brand, they just took the formulation of the products and split them up into their existing brands. Uh, so the Remergent brand is not sold today, uh, but um, it's, uh, it, it lives on now in Photozyme. Perfect. All right, um, here's one for Dr. Bukai. So uh, one of the functions of growth factors in products is to split the cells. Do you feel that when you acquire photo damage and it affects the DNA of the cell, does using a growth factor then split the damage plus cause more damage? By using Photozyme, can this help repair the damage, thus allowing you to use a growth factor product? Wow, this is a really uh, intriguing question and this is probably way above my pay grade. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because growth factors are really, really complicated. And some of you all might know how I feel about growth factors uh, and their potential because, you know, one like vascular endothelial growth factor. Let me just say this, growth factors. How do we know what you're turning on? Can you be turning on bad things or, or you know, you can't select what you're turning on, right? So in theory, in theory, if you have, um, first we have to assume that the growth factors are actually doing what they do, right? That they're either working through a signaling cascade. Uh, they're probably not, they're too large to penetrate uh, the skin. So technically speaking that way, but some people say that if you have balanced growth factors that it's really not gonna affect, uh, you know, turn on skin cancers. But if we wanna just reduce it and make it the simplest, simplest question is, I think that using a growth factor without using DNA repair doesn't make a lot of sense because if you have, uh, again, I'll use my typo uh, analogy. If you photocopy, if you photocopy um, a paper, uh, you know, if you photocopy, uh, if you send a text message that has a typo in it and the person that got the message now sent it to the, like forwarded it to another two people and those two people forwarded the typo to another eight, theoretically, you know, unless assuming that forwarding are the growth factors, then theoretically, you could be you know, spreading that. So does it make sense to uh, use DNA repair? Yeah, I think it makes sense to use DNA repair before you use growth factors. I mean, at the end of the day, growth factors and peptides were designed to kind of optimize and make, you know, they're like frosting on the cake on that pyramid, they're at the top, but the foundation, uh, you know, going back to the article, that 2014 article about, you know, how to, you know, kind of creating priorities in the skincare, at the bottom is prevent those free radicals, protect the skin with sunscreen, 
scavenge the free radicals that are going to form anyway, because most people only use about half to a quarter of the amount of sunscreen that they're going to you know, use, the, um, and then have DNA repair so that whatever did get damaged anyway, because between sunscreen and antioxidants, it wasn't enough to control. Now you've got your DNA repair, do that. And then you can talk about adding other layers to it. You know, why, why do you want to repaint a wall without taking off all the old yucky stuff without, uh, you know, going that way? I speak in analogies uh, a lot. So, uh, so that would be, you know, that's just one, you know, one way that I look at it. That's very interesting. I know that was a big question, but I, um, well, I hope if, if the person that asked it has any more questions, please ask them. All right, here's a good one. Um, so thanks, Dr. Yarosh. I met you at a regimen conference in Long Island decades ago, excited about Photozyme. I believe in having my patients use it AM and PM, but is once a day sufficient? The reason I ask is for those who want to use an ultra rich enzyme for nighttime, it only has one enzyme. So should they use youth recovery serum under the ultra rich? Then that he also said, I didn't realize Photozyme helps improve solar elasto elastosis. I will now have my laser resurfacing patients start using Photozyme in addition to elastin. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, they should. Well, so we've done one study asking the question, if you're only going to apply uh, the DNA repair enzymes one time, what's the best time to do it? So we did this in the morning in the middle of the day, late in the day, and at night. And it turns out there's a small advantage in doing it late in the day. And this is probably because it's a good time to, uh, you've accumulated whatever damage happens during the day, primarily from sun exposure, and you catch it early. If you apply the DNA repair too early, then you have to wait 24 hours to get it again. If you wait too late in the day, there's some time, as I mentioned, the minutes and the hours. So if you're only gonna use it once, uh, you know, put it on before dinner. Now we know people don't do that. They don't run to the bathroom to put on skincare. So it's best that they put it on than then they not put it on. So morning and night is when people have a regimen of applying skincare. So I would recommend morning and night, but if you were a complete nerd, you'd put it on right before going to dinner. So can I add to that? The ultra rich cream has all three DNA repair enzymes in it. So for bedtime, let's just say I want them to use. And the other thing is that there is, again, I'm not trying to be a commercial here, but I did at some point work on this product also in a different, uh, where did our retinol go? Did I lose my retinol? There's one that has a retinol that you have your, uh, you've got, oh, I think I didn't pull that one out, but there is one that also has a retinoid in it, if you will, as well as, uh, DNA repair. So, I mean, there's like the full spectrum. I kind of figure we're like 24 seven. I mean, we, our bodies, I mean, I, I know there's a circadian rhythm that I understand, but everything's happening. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, uh, and, and I, do re I do understand what Dr. Yarosh is saying, you know, late afternoon, I mean, technically speaking, but, uh, but really what in, in the grand scheme of things, a few hours here over a lifetime, what is difference is that really gonna make for a study? It might make a difference where you're taking very isolated time points. But I would think that as we accumulate damage, you know, all the way, I like, I like the twice daily, whatever has to happen. Um, one oh, question- And it's the GFS plus. That yeah, the GFS right. plus that has it, but I may not have pulled that one out. I've got the C and the E, there's the eye cream also. There's everything in here. I've, I have them all. There's also a body one. There's the DNA, there's the actual body. When we talked about, you know, repairing damage on the body. So there is actually a body cream as well. I am happy to say uh, with that. So there's just like no excuse. Um, I think what's interesting though, is the question I had asked yesterday was if some of um, the, the sunscreen on the market, the ISDIN one, it is only photolyase as well as the, the zinc oxide, right? It's a, it's a physical sunscreen, which technically speaking should be blocking blue light as well, since blue light is a hot topic. And photolyase, my understanding is there's different, right, Dr. Yaros, you said there's different wavelengths that it'll absorb. I'll let you comment on that. I just, to me, it was paradoxical. Could the DNA repair enzyme be working despite a sunscreen? We know that it does, but I like the way you answered that for me yesterday. Yes, well, the photolyase will absorb lots of different wavelengths of light. It's just most efficient with uh, absorbing blue light. 
So if you're going to use it with the sunscreen, you need more light exposure indoors from fluorescent light, visible light. Uh, but if you use it uh, and you have a chemical sunscreen rather than one of these physical, the zinc or the titanium, you're likely to get better activation of the, of the photolyse. And less protection of the bodies, you know, <laughs> with the sunscreen too. That way overall. All right, so do we have time for a few more questions? I have three left, if that's okay. Um, is Photozyme exactly the same product that was studied in the Spencer study? Yes, Dr. Tab asked that question. I text, I typed, but I guess somehow didn't manage oh. to send the reply. I thought I said it in the presentation, but yes, the, the Photozyme is exactly the owners of them. Uh, I, just, I just call them Greg and Randy, the DNA repair guys. Uh, again, going back to that whole lineage, uh, Greg Chance worked at AGI Dermatics, and then he, you know, well knew back when Revergent was the line, and uh, he was that. Anyway, they have it, and then there used to be. Well, it's carefree skincare. Uh, there'll be a bonus, a bonus prize if some, if anybody knows why it's called carefree skincare. But they're the ones that had the DNA repair that was then sold to Precision. It was so good that then Valiant purchased Precision, and then Valiant. Well, you know, we're not neither here nor there. But uh, the DNA repair guys, the dynamic duo, uh, uh, Brandy purchased it back, and and now we have we have cell fix. But it's the identical product; it's the exact same product. Okay, great. Now you should feel very comfortable that the science applies to Photozyme. I, that's why I stress the formulation matters. Yes. All right. Someone chimed in just said the body lotion is amazing. Just FYI. Um, okay, so here's a, a good question: How well do your products? play well with other products? Can they be layered with other products or are their products, are these products that should not be used in conjunction? Are there products that these should not be used in conjunction with? I mean, in my personal experience, they layer, they do really well together. I mean, they, they, they do play well with other products since I sometimes, so for example, there's not a sunscreen in this particular line and uh, I will admit that I use the, uh, the ISDEN, the Airy Photona Ageless, which is tinted. And that's what I put on top of my, you know, as my, that's what, I, that's what I'm wearing right now. Um, that's what I have. But I also uh, use the Skin Better, the Skin Better Science. I like their stick that feels like a primer. So um, that one is, that can be used like on really, you know, dark skin. So I, I use, I mean, I use a variety of things. Uh, I think the important point, uh, uh, that I don't think there's an issue of them playing well together. It's the order of application. So yeah. if things that you want to get into the living layer of skin should go on first. And the things that you want to stay on top of the skin, like sunscreens and color, uh, the, the uh, BB creams, those should go on later. So it's yeah, the order. I, mean, it's, I put on the serum. I mean, the serum is so crazy light. I mean, it's, it's invisible. It was a white cream. I mean, that serum is absorbed in a second. So that's what I put on first on my skin. So don't be fooled that it comes out white. It actually goes on clear. There it is back on the screen. Got, Got it. it. Okay, so Lane doesn't have perfect. it. Perfect. Um, and just a reminder, you know, all of these great products and brands that everyone's um, bringing up and talking about are all available on Regimen Pro. So if any of you are thinking about prescribing these regimens for your patients, they can have a combination of all these products through our platform. All right. Very last question, which I think is just a great one, um, is what is your skincare treatment program? What for do you who? Do? Mine? Yeah, I guess they didn't specify who. <laughs> like what, what do we do? So I break it down. So for me personally, cause you can imagine I have as, about as much as Sephora does at home. Um, I do, uh, well, it's one of the perks, right? We get to try everything. My personal regimen right now is, I'll, I'm gonna keep it in broad categories. How about that? I, I prevent and protect during the day and it's repair and renewal at night. So in the morning I'm doing my DNA but yes, I'm doing DNA repair. But remember, it has L-ergothionine in it as well. And, uh, and then I'm also doing, um, well, this is just launching. I didn't have this particular c &E, so I was using a different c &E. I was using a different c &E that I was actually kind of mixing with my uh, photozyme sometimes. And because uh, it's an anhydrous c &E that I've been using. So um, I do that. I moisturize. And then I put on my sunscreen. Oh, and then I have, I do 
I don't mean to be unfaithful to regimen, uh, I mean, not to regimen, to photozyme, but I use the, uh, thank you for a shout out about the defense since Dr. Amy Taub uh, and I and, and Greg Keller did the, the stuff with defense uh, So I do use an eye cream that has the, the defense in it. That's the eye cream I happen to use right now. The, um, so I use eye cream morning and night. I also use the, oh, I'm just gonna be totally transparent. I use Color Science Total Eye. I use that as my sunscreen around the eyes. Yeah, it takes kind of a village to sit in front of a, a screen or to like leave the house. So I've got my eye cream, my Color Science Total Eye, my DNA repair, antioxidant, moisturizer, sunscreen. It really doesn't take that long. And then at nighttime, uh, you know, remove all the schmutz off the face. And then uh, eye cream, uh, I do my DNA repair, retinoid, and a moisturizer if, uh, if need be. And then I have a neck cream that I'm using right now that happens to be from, uh, from Definage, uh, which is also the Defensins one. But I also put on my DNA repair there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff <laughs> I shared. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very uh, simil similar philosophy, but much more simple. I shave and then I use a moisturizer. I, because of my time at SD Lauder and Clinique, I use the Clinique Moisture Surge. I, I really like that moisturizer. Uh, I use sunscreens. I use all kinds of sunscreens. People send me sunscreens. I have a, a some people collect cars. I like to try out sunscreens. So I have uh, lots and lots of different sunscreens. And then at night, it's DNA repair. Beautiful. Well, I know there's there's so many amazing products out there and all this amazing science. So I, um, you know, a lot of people have tuned in and stayed on till the end here. So I think that all this information was really helpful. Again, it was recorded. We'll send it out to everyone. Everyone who attended will get their complimentary Photozyme product as well. Um, and for those of you, we will be putting this on YouTube as well. So if you're watching this not live, if you want to email and reach out to Regimen, we'd still be happy to get you your free product as well. So I just wanna give a big shout out and thank you to Dr. Garosh and Dr. Bukai. I appreciate all of your time and this huge download of knowledge. It was really helpful. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. I ticked off on the bucket list. I had one day speak with Dr. Dan Yarosh and I have like can check that one off. I'm excited. <laughs> Yay. Only Yay. 13 days into the new year. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so thank much. You. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and we'd love to see you on the Regimen Pro platform um, or, you know, wherever we may be. Thank you so much. Talk to Thanks. you all soon. Good night. Bye. Talk soon. Bye-bye.